sad sight, isn't it? Yes, a terrible sight. It's not one of those videos that you really want to get into because if bud blast happens in your orchids, maybe it's something you would like to get over and forget very, very quickly. So I appreciate your company, your time, and the fact that you decided to watch this video anyway. Orchid lingo, bud blast. That's what we're gonna be talking about today. And here is my pastoral innocence. I was looking forward to three buds and she is my prime candidate about the subject amongst others, of course, but we're gonna have her in the viewfinders and I will bring in other orchids that have given me bud blast as an example based on what I'm talking about. So once again, thank you very much for being here for the subject of orchid lingo, bud blast. I find that bud blast is the second worst thing to happen in the orchid hobby. The first being losing an orchid entirely. But bud blast, yeah, that to me is a tough one to come to terms with, recognize it's going to happen after all the months of anticipation and you see buds happening in your orchid and you're excited about the blooms and then suddenly the peduncle goes yellow and you know it's inevitable, it's going to happen. So let me just start off right from the get-go if you're familiar with my channel and my modus operandi, I am a fan of cutting off spikes prematurely to conserve energy for an orchid in recovery. But having buds and then having them blast, that is something that hits hard for a few days. And those days are the worst. When I notice peduncles yellowing, that signals bud blast is imminent. So after having gotten over that initial disappointment, now the analysis begins, and that is what I want to share with you today. The question being, what went wrong? So sticking to the lingo part, when orchids drop their buds, it's called bud blast. And if the orchid drops its blooms prematurely, it is called bloom blast. Say that 10 times quickly back to back, <laughs> bloom blast. <laughs> But the question then I am left with, why has this happened? Is there anything I could have done to stop it and still get to enjoy some blooms, if even one? The answer to that typical for the orchid hobby is yes and no. We could keep this video very, very simple by just identifying the one common denominator that causes bud blast, and that is stress. But in order to really analyze why it has happened with an orchid or several orchids, we need to break that down to the individual influences that fall into what is defined as stress for the orchid. This way, for the next time, hopefully we can plan ahead and change what went wrong to correct that mistake and have our orchid bloom. So here's a list of what I consider are stress influences for our orchids that result in bud blast. And then I will go to analyzing what I think happened with my pastoral innocence and my leonis and possibly my twinkle and anything else that I might come up with as I speak. So the 10 factors I've come up with that could be considered stress for an orchid, and it isn't all of them in one go. It is 10 that I can identify that then play with each other or against each other when it comes to bud blast. Those are overwatering, or underwatering, improper lighting, temperature fluctuations, humidity, the lack thereof, pollutants, pest infestation, first time bloomers, nutrient deficiency, location, and draft. And I have one bonus factor that I consider is important to know because many times we buy an orchid, they say it's blooming size, but blooming size from a division it was taken out of, and then suddenly it is not blooming size anymore. The parent is still blooming size, but our division isn't. And that additional factor is not enough structures, including roots for a division to bloom out. Also keep in mind that you have several orchids in your collection. They're all budding at the same time, and you have them all in the same location. Everything that might've affected this orchid bears no relevance to the orchid standing right next to it that has had the same conditions in the months leading up to blooming, and yet that one has bloomed out, as is with my Nafert's Alex Poli. So getting over the initial disappointment of bud blast takes a little while. The challenge of the analysis now comes into effect. Overwatering, 
and underwatering. I would say pretty self-explanatory. Overwatering will destroy the roots. Underwatering will not provide enough water hydration and nutrients up into the structures to give the orchid the energy to then fully bloom out. And that is why that bonus point of no roots was important, just to mention that, because if I just said overwatering and underwatering, it would bring up the next question, what does that mean when you say overwatering? If my orchid is starting to bloom, it needs more water. We have to watch what's going on with the roots. Improper lighting, well, if that isn't self-explanatory, that to me just says the orchid has had enough light to get to the point of buds, but then due to seasonal changes or goodness me, if there was a power cut, lighting won't work, those buds will blast because it doesn't have enough light to push through to the stage of blooming. Temperature fluctuations, too cold, too fast, too soon, if one is not growing in a controlled and regulated environment depending on the ambient air and the climate to do its thing. Freak temperature changes when we head into the colder months of the year or freak heat waves as we head into spring. All these radical temperature changes, it may not necessarily even be radical to us, but the slightest different kind of fluctuation that is out of the norm for the orchid causes stress. Humidity is also really, really important. Too much and the buds will rot out too little and the buds will shrivel up and die. Pollutants are also a factor, especially if you're heating in the winter and you're using gas. The fumes from the gas as it heats the room will cause bud blast. The same with ethylene gas. If you've got fruit around your orchids that are in bud, the ethylene gas from the ripening fruit, that will also cause bud blast. Perfumes, if you wear perfumes or, for example, you were to spritz yourself in the vicinity of your orchids, also is a possible cause for bud blast. Pest infestation, self-explanatory. You get those in there and yes, they will chomp away at the delicious tender structures that are the buds and the peduncle. First time bloomers, nothing I just mentioned could have had any effect on the bud blast of your orchid. And well, it is a first time bloomer. It's trying. It may just show you that it can, but is not quite ready yet. Nutrient deficiency. If there is not much to go on that the orchid can live off of in order to use up the energy, having had enough nutrients to bloom out, then that will also cause bud blast, especially calcium comes to mind, being that it is an immobile element for the orchid. And a lot of calcium deficiencies will show up as bud blast. The location of the orchid, if you have, for example, temperature fluctuations and you grow partially indoors, partially outdoors, depending on the season, and you are not in a regulated environment, then moving the orchid from outside to inside or vice versa, if this were to be spring from inside back to outside, if the orchid is in bud, it's going to blast those buds more often than not and draft, opening a window, closing a window. Even if, for example, your orchids are in your kitchen and you just open the oven to get your dinner out, that can also cause bud blast. And I did mention not enough structures, including roots, especially in this case, we have a case of a division. So let's go into what happened here and my process of analysis after I saw the peduncles go yellow. Maybe the way I think through this is helpful to you if you find yourself in a similar situation, but you don't know where to start to break down what went wrong to hopefully then correct that mistake for the next blooming. Know that not all the time, every single factor that I have just mentioned plays a part in bud blast. It could only be one factor. It could be four or five. And it is not a point of, again, considering the neighboring orchid that has bloomed out and said, well, it worked for that one, it didn't work for this one. These are two different individuals we're talking about. It's like having two people stand in the same line. One is bundled up because they are freezing cold with gloves and shawl on. And the other one is standing there with just a windbreaker. And for that person, it is not cold at all. So consider every orchid an individual when you do your analysis. Now. This being a first time bloomer, I have to start from the beginning. I have never had an experience with bud blast here before. So in my analysis, I go to what do I always do when I see an orchid in bud? Well, 
I leave her in the position where she is when I first saw the buds, let her bloom out and then move her to a location where I can see her in my line of vision and enjoy the blooms. And that is what I did with pastoral innocence. So now we have to think she didn't like where she was placed. So location. The next point I want to talk about is overwatering and underwatering. I know for the fact that this orchid was well watered because I can see by her structures I don't have any ridges in the pseudobulbs. She is plump, she is nice, nothing has suffered. So watering is not an issue. We can now discuss nutrients. That is a possible cause because now as leading into winter, I have to consider the option reducing the levels of PPM that I give my orchids during the colder months of the year could have a possible influence on the bud blast. So I will tick that part of the list and remember that for next year, that if I have a similar situation, I will not reduce the fertilizer so that I can at least take that part of my analytics out while I then observe the rest of the points. Temperature fluctuations, I will definitely keep that in mind because when this orchid was budding out, it started in December, early December, and we had a very cold spell all of a sudden, which was not normal. So temperature, I will definitely put that on my list of analysis. Pollutants, absolutely. It is possible that having heated a little part of my living room open dining room space with a gas heater, it could be that the fumes from that had an effect on bud blast. So I will take note of that one for the next time. Pest infestation I can eliminate because there were no pests on this orchid. First time bloomer, I will definitely put that on the list of my analytics to know that this is a division after all, and it is a first time bloomer for me because, you know, previous year's sheath has remained empty. So first time bloomer, division, it is a mature orchid. But considering it is a division, I will definitely put that on my list. We've discussed location. Now let's look at draft. This orchid was placed on the top shelf of my grow space next to the Nafritz Alex Poli. Seeing as both of them started showing signs of spike and buds at the same time, and I was not going to move them. That includes not even rotating the orchid. I positioned the orchid the way she is to bloom out. The light source coming from the side I wanted the blooms to fold and open into, coming from that side, and that's where she stayed. I did have to move her down in order to flush her, but I didn't move her all the way outside or anything like that. However, there is a terrace door that I will open every single day and I try to balance out whether my temperature outdoor now matches my temperatures indoor so that all orchids that are in bud do not risk bud blast simply by me opening the door at 8 in the morning when it's still 11 degrees outside. This one, I have to put in the factor of draft on my options and possibilities to see if I can rule that out for the next time. Not enough structures, not enough roots. I think four is plenty, but what I think is not relevant. Clearly we don't have blooms. So one structure wanted to bloom, it had bud blast, meaning it had three structures in reserves. Maybe this orchid needs a fifth structure in order to perform. That is an option I have to take into consideration. I don't have to worry about the roots in the pot, because I know there are roots in the pot. Everything in there is looking just fine. I have no concerns at all. So you see that I have my list that I look at, that I analyze, that I take into consideration. And I think back to the movements of the orchid and what it has dealt with from the time it started buds all the way through to when I saw the first peduncle go yellow. Now, Here's the thing, this has happened. I've got my list, what options could be the possibility and I will weigh those odds when the next time comes around. But there are occasions when I do actually allow bud blast, even though I know it's going to happen. It is a risk in certain grow situations, especially mine that is not controlled and I do depend on the ambient climate and then I balance that out and do my best with what I've got. I need to take 99% of my collection into consideration, give them priority. I have to open the terrace doors for airflow 
refresh the air. And even though I have a lot of buds on the go, the good of the majority of my collection ranks higher than one orchid or two orchids that are in bud. I can only hope for the best and do the best I can to make sure that the 10, 11 factors that I've mentioned are all somewhat adhered to and in place and just hope that I've got it right. In this case, I didn't get it right and I have other orchids that need fresh air. So for the good of one, I am not going to put at risk the health of 99% of my collection. The same with my Twinkle, for example. It was in a drafty area. It was right in the firing line of where the terrace door opens first thing. And sometimes the breeze in the shade is a little bit chillier than when you're standing in the sun. But that Twinkle had scale on it and I was treating the scale. So I left it separated away from the rest of my collection so that the scale wouldn't wreak havoc in the rest of my collection. So Twinkle had to stay where she was because of her circumstances and I risked bud blast there and I got plenty of bud blast there because of the draft. However, sometimes I risk bud blast knowing that an orchid has so many blooms coming anyway. If I lose 50% of those buds, considering worst case scenario, I'm okay with that. The rest of the orchids indoors, they need air and that is my priority. So I'm wondering if this list is complete enough, all the points that fall under what causes stress to an orchid. These are sensitive plants, no matter what you see temperature wise, or if you think you've opened your greenhouse door appropriately, uh, something will happen and the orchid itself then drops the buds to protect itself and to conserve energy. So in that sense, Bud Blast is a good thing because we know what we need to look into for next time. We also know that the orchid is preserving its energy when we as humans couldn't gauge what stress it was going under, but at least its need for survival will cause the buds to blast and they have their reasons for it. We have to then figure out why. And I hope that this checklist of the individual stress factors is helpful in case you find yourself in a similar situation, you can write it down and then go through one by one, depending on the orchid, depending what's done, depending its history over the past 12 months of the growing season and eliminate or include any of the points for the next go around and then hopefully nail it and we get blooms. So as long as my orchid is fine, the disappointment lasts about yeah, two days. There's still some wishful thinking that one bud might bloom out if two were to fail. Didn't happen this time, but she is fine. And well, we have another go around the next time she throws out her new growth and we'll try again and hopefully be successful in the coming year. And if that is not the case, then we'll be successful in the following year beyond that as is the case with my Sunya Green Mailman. Three years in a row, I have had bud blast, so there are no guarantees, but these pointers are a great checklist in case this happens to you, and I hope that this was helpful. If you have any other symptoms as to why bud blast would occur, I would encourage you to please leave that in the comments below because some people like to go to the comments for more information. And if I am not complete with all the information I'm trying to provide at my end, then filling in the blanks in the comments is awesome and very, very much appreciated. So hope this was helpful. I really appreciate your time watching and I want to thank you so much for spending time watching this video. Have yourselves a beautiful, beautiful day on one condition, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye. <laughs>